So today we'll be talking about Nikon's profiles, 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit linear RAW. There's a creek at this park, and that's the reason why we came here today, to analyze the dynamic range in the highlights through the trees and to see how much detail we can preserve in the shadows. So let's take a closer look and see what I've done to achieve the look in each profile. So in 10-bit and lock, if you lower the exposure levels, you'll be able to tell if there's any details in your highlights and in your shadows. If you lower the exposure levels, you can tell whether you got details in your highlights. If you bring the exposure levels up, you'll be able to tell whether there's uh, details in the shadows. So that's why we're trying to figure out how much detail was there when we captured this scene. What we used to correct this profile was a 3D LUT from Nikon. And as you can see, it was the only way to correct the flatness in the, in the look of it. And when it comes to the, how the colors look out of the camera and in the Ninja 5, all profiles look pretty much flat, except for the 8-bit profile from Nikon. That's the only one that has more contrast and you were able to see a little more details and colors when you're capturing. It maintains your shadows, but it will cap your highlights. Now we're looking at 12-bit RAW. The dynamic range in the shadows is vast, and the midtones has a lot of vibrance. So there's a lot of details in the highlights and in the shadows for ProRes RAW, and that's the reason why it looks so good. There's a lot of vibrant colors, and the shadows have a lot of contrast. So in this scene, the 12-bit RAW, moving the exposure levels, you can tell how much detail there is in the highlights and in the shadows. And that's the reason why Linear RAW is so much more complicated to work with. You can expose properly and add masks as required, and you will get back all the information that you need. This is something that Nikon prides itself on, the color science. So if you're looking for a cinematic look, this perhaps would be the way to go. Much like the other scenes that I've shown you, now we're looking at this profile's flat as capture in its own device. If you want to maintain the most details in your blacks, you're probably going to have to shoot 8-bit or 12-bit linear raw. So I believe this is a willow tree. Let's look at how the camera captures the dynamic range in the highlights and shadows and compare that in a little bit.
12-bit 4K RAWs here and the benefits were worth the wait. It gives you manageable file sizes, high dynamic range, and ease of use when editing. Ignicon's 8-bit profile is no slacker, it holds its own. In fact, I would prefer Nikon's 8-bit profile any day over the 10-bit analog. If I'm going to carry a full rig, I much rather shoot ProRes RAW onto the Ninja 5. There's no reason for middle ground and shoot the 10-bit analog if you're carrying the, all that equipment. So before I forget, now that we have ProRes RAW integrated into the Nikon system, do you think it can hold its own against Canon? Canon just came out with their own system that can do internal RAW recording up to 8K. Now, I'm not going to put the Nikon system and compare it at 8K to 4K, but if we can compare apples to apples and 4K footage to 4K footage, do you think that Canon is better or do you think that Nikon is better? You got to remember that Nikon is giving you 12-bit ProRes RAW while Canon is going to give you 10-bit 422, which is equivalent to the Nikon's analog profile system. So leave me your thoughts below. And um, I will see you next time.